Right, so in this part of the tutorial, we're going to be focusing on texturing and lighting. So let's just maneuver the camera out a bit. Okay, let's have a look at our materials editor. So it seems to have created a variety of different copies every time we've done the uh, ivy grower. So I'm just going to clean that up a bit by going to function and you can remove duplicate materials, which is lovely. So if you've got a whole load of stuff that's the same and you want to sort of tidy up your scene, that's a really good way of doing it. Now, my scene in the uh, other example had some nice grass going all over this disc. So I'm going to utilize the disc that I had in here earlier for smashing this on, but I no longer need the Dynamics plugin so that can go. Sorry, uh, tag, so that's gone. So I'm just going to increase the size of that a tad and you know, we can maneuver and play with that a little bit more. And then I'm going to go to Cinema 4D's Grow Grass function. Okay, um, I've done a whole tutorial on that, so um, you can go and find that at your leisure and see what that's like. I'm just going to click render to see how that looks, what I think of that grass. Uh, it's just going to take a second. Come along. Okay, so that took a little bit longer than I was expecting, so I had to speed that up. Um, yeah, okay, so the grass could do with being quite a tad longer, methinks. So I'm just going to get that and then I'm going to open up the material. Let's have a nose then, uh, sort of blade length. 25 centimeters seems to be really small, so it looks like it's going to have to be something like 100. And therefore, I imagine that's going to have to be about 10% of that. So what I'm going to do really quickly, I'm just going to render that region just so that's the only bit it's got to prepare for, and we shall see how that goes. There we go, that's a bit better, so that's a little bit more interesting. Okay, um, it looks relatively thick as well, which isn't too bad. Um, you know, you can try and make it longer a bit, but it's, you know, sort of like increasing its length around sort of these bits, so it's not quite so stark along there. Maybe you want them even longer. To be honest, this scene is entirely up to you. I'm relatively happy with the way it looks, but I might just add a little bit more sort of crinkle and bend to it, so it's a little less sort of you know, sort of neat and shiny. I may just increase the size of that really quite, so it's quite large as well. Um, and we can have a look at that and see what it's going to look like up against those things. Um, and I shall speed it up again and we should have a nose. Okay, maybe a little bit too long there. It seems to have swamped the bottom of that column, but to be honest, I guess it's up to you. You can see whether or not you want there to be anything less. It does give that realistic effect that it is growing itself way over the columns and this place has been a little bit forgotten. Okay, so that's cool. So what we need to do now is focus on the texturing for the columns themselves. Now, I'm going to utilize what there is in Cinema 4D already. So I'm going to go to Content Browser and I'm going to do a search for marble. There we go, and we've got a lovely sort of selection of different types of marble and I think I want to pick that one. The Danby one is quite nice. It's nice and white. So I'm going to pick all of the things that are going to be that colour. So that's all of those lofts and that Voronoi fracture. And they're all in that cloner and I'm just going to drag and drop that to it. And there we go. That should overdo all of that. I'm just going to turn off the um, disc for the moment so we haven't got the grass and then do a quick render. And there you can see we've got this wonderful sort of marble texture working its way over these columns, okay, giving us that interesting sense of you know, realism, or a little bit more anyway. Now, lighting, okay. So what I'm going to add is something I find really useful is a physical sky, okay. This physical sky is incredibly useful. And it's also got some really lovely presets, and that's what I'm going to sort of dip into here as well. Okay, so we've got sky and we've got weather presets. So there's a sky one, um, and if we just pick some of these, they've also got some you know fine stacked clouds, depending on how you want it to look at. I chose one of the others, which was uh, I'm going to have to sort of mosey my way through, which is a what they refer to as a warm. Uh, blushing winter sunset. There we go. That's what I was after. Okay, and that 
little thing in the middle lets you know sort of like the angles that the sun is going to be at and where it's going to come in. And I'm just going to rotate that a tad because I want that sun to be coming in over sort of that direction. So it's coming through these clouds. Okay, perfect. Um, and a quick render again will just give you this sort of nice atmospheric um, feel to the, the clouds and the sky and things and it sort of just fades everything out a bit but it gives that wonderful atmosphere what the physical sky does okay because that's what's been enabled and now okay what I need to do is get the woodland background that I had going make it feel that this is in a forest and that I also will admit is also in the content browser so if I just go to the content browser and then I search for wood okay oh, it might have been wood it may have been forest I think it's forest here we go we've got forest one and forest two alpha map so depending on you know how you want to use it and how you want to make stuff you know if you want to layer it up it's up to you but I'm going to double click that and that brings this into the fold as it were which is this you know forest background and it's not too bad it was going to do what I want it to which is going to give me a fake background okay I'm not going to make a whole load of trees so you can either use the one in cinema 4d that we've already got that I'm about to use here or maybe uh, it's just basically an alpha channel so if you have an outline of a forest or some trees and you want to cut it out that's going to make your life much easier and then you apply it as a texture. Now my one as you can see didn't just stop like that to give me a line so what I did I wanted it to wrap around and to wrap it around I use the wonderfully named uh, wrap deformer so if I go up here to the deformers and then I click wrap There we go, okay, we have our wrap there. So it's a bit tiny for sort of like the size we're gonna want it, so I'm just going to rotate it around, okay, and then I'm going to scale it up. So it's going to sort of work with the semicircle that we are after. So you're gonna to need to adjust it and maybe use your top view, and you can see that that is the, the radius of the cylinder that it's gonna create. So if I increase the size of that and then maybe move it a bit further backwards I might just keep going so that it's um, you know, really nice and encompassing and then what we're going to need to do we're going to need to drag the uh, wrap into the forest but before we do that if you look at the forest segments you can see that there is not a lot so the width segments are going to need to increase quite dramatically in order to get the you know the, the thing to wrap around properly so if I'm just going to choose that 36 at the moment and then I'm going to drag and drop the wrap into the forest there you go you can see that it does it and it starts to well it, it starts to wrap itself around it seems to be doing it an awful lot at the moment so what I might need to do is just sort of shrink or increase that and there you go you can see that we've got a forest that starts to wrap itself around okay and that's that's not too bad um, and if I go you know back into the, sort of like the the view of the columns when I'm inside it's quite nice that it it gives us that wrap around feel now what you might want to do is you can adjust these and the reason why I'm going to do that is because what I really want to happen I want to have that in the middle so you may want to sort of adjust your start and end angles so that we've got like one of these you know fighting their way through because this is what I'm going to use to give us that um, light shaft uh, so you know sort of playing around with textures and lighting and things like that um, will give us you know some some sort of experiments with it and you know if I just turn that back on here we go we can see that it's actually far too low so I'm going to need to move the whole thing up um, you might want to increase the height of the forest so that it's not quite so small and the other thing I did was I made another copy so I copied and pasted so we've got a second one and this one I used as a sort of a bigger outlay so I did that and then I increased its radius so that we've got that sort of second 
sort of shaft of you know greenery as it were and again you may want to change with your longitude and latitude start so that it's slightly different but we still end up with this wonderful sort of sort of opening where the shaft of light is going to come through now being a silhouette we don't want it to be green okay so i'm going to look into my alpha map there so we've got simply got luminance and reflectance i'm going to turn off luminance it's the easiest thing to do and that way it instantly becomes black and i'm just going to turn the grass off again and now if i render okay we're, we're starting to get that sense and feeling of a, a forest in the background and the shafts of light which we will create in a minute will make that even better okay cool so that took a couple of minutes so i sped that up um, but you can see that we're starting to get this wonderful sort of misty look through um, through our the columns that we're going to you know give us that sort of freaky nature the one thing I am going to turn off, I'm going to do a couple of things, is the one thing I had hidden the physical sky so that we couldn't see it. So it will give us the illumination and everything, but it won't be seen by the camera. So I'm just going to go to tags and then I am going to go to the uh, compositing tag and I'm going to remove scene by camera, which means that it, it won't render, but it will still illuminate the scene the way I want it to. And now I'm going to add the light that will give us that shaft of light coming through there. And so if I'm just going to create that, I'm going to create a, I'm going to create a spotlight to start with. Okay, and then I'm going to sort of come out of there and I'm going to manoeuvre it behind all of my sort of scenery and my setup. Then under the light settings, I'm going to go and change it from a spotlight to a square parallel spot because that's going to give me this, and it gives me a nice wide area that I can use, and a nice big sort of configurable depth to give us that light. And the sort of light that we are going to use is volumetric. So the volumetric light will allow us to have this sort of fade through. So where there is stuff in the way, it will block out and it will give us those nice shafts of light behind. So I'm just going to adjust the angle of that so that those shafts of light come down. And I'm going to bring that all the way across. Because I found that if you don't, if it cuts off, then you can see the, the end of it and it's going to look a bit strange. Okay. So we're going to do have to sort of experiment with this and do a couple of renders to see how this goes. Um, the one thing I don't want it to do is illuminate the scene. So I'm going to put a tick in the box that says no illumination. I love what the sky is doing to this at the moment and I don't want it to be ruined by another light in there. It's got no shadows on it so it's not producing anything so that's all coming from the, the sunlight uh, from the sky but this will produce those um, beams of light for us. So I'm going to turn my disk on which by the look of it, I'm going to need to just increase the width of it a tad because it's disappearing into there. OK, and then I'm going to hit render of my picture viewer and we're going to see how long this takes to sort of produce. We're going to need to sort of experiment with this shaft of light business a little bit. So I'm going to click render and I shall speed it up again and I shall see you in a second. Okay, there we go. We're getting some interesting sort of effects here with all of the uh, things, but it doesn't seem to be giving us much of a volumetric look. Okay, so we're going to have to sort of adjust that and see what we can produce. So it's going to take some tweaking. So let's see what we've got. We might have to increase the, the density. So if I get that light, there we go. Maybe it's that. Maybe that's going to help. And I'm also going to increase the height of that second forest. I just think it needs to be a little bit bigger so that we've got that sort of sense of height and differential between all of that. Also, I feel the brightness. So the intensity, I think, on my one that I'd done earlier was about 250. So I'm just gonna do a quick render region and we shall see if that starts to give us that look. Okay, there we go. That's a bit nicer. Excellent. So 
I'm just going to adjust some of its settings again a bit more. I think I'm going to make it a little bit more orange. I think that so it starts to fit in with the, the type of light that the sky is producing on its own. And then I'm just going to zoom in. OK, and we shall have a look and see what that creates. Now, of course, I always add a couple of lovely little render features, and those are ambient occlusion and global illumination, as I feel that that gives a really nice sort of sense of, you know, real sort of light bouncing. So again, I'm going to just set this rendering and we shall see how that looks in a mo. Okay, there we go, look at that. So I'm really pleased with the golden sort of sunbeams that we've got coming through those trees. I think that's looking really good. Uh, I think the fog might be a little bit much though, so I'm gonna adjust that. And I've also noticed that the, the grass has disappeared. Now that's because of the size that I've made everything. So I'm just going to adjust my uh, size segments there. So um, to say sort of 6,500 and that should give me enough where I've got the grass growing through there. And if I just now go to my um, uh, sky, you can see that we've got the fog. You can turn that on and off if you want it or don't want it, but I'm just gonna lower the amount that there is. Okay, I think we need to adjust its intensity by about, say, down to 25%. So now I shall just make sure that my render settings are all okay, yep. And I shall just click render again, and I shall see you in a sec. Right, there we go. So there we have it, our final image there of our dilapidated ruined temple. We've got some lovely lights going on in there and we've got some nice grass and fog effects happening. Okay, well, I hope this tutorial was useful for you and you've got some sort of useful information from a variety of things that I've done in it. Uh, and if not, then you've just enjoyed the, the sort of process of, of getting to this particular point using all of the things that we've done. And I shall uh, catch you in the next tutorial. See you later.